Today we explored the recent trends regarding central banks and their gold purchases and what this is likely to mean for the gold price. So let's dive on in. Now this channel provides global macro insights and champions the importance of sound money in a world gone crazy, so please do consider subscribing. Since the last financial crisis we've seen a huge sea change in the attitude of central banks globally towards gold. Over the last 10 years they have become significant uh, gold market participants as many have sought to actually diversify their foreign exchange reserves. Uh, away from simply holding dollars or euros. Of course China and Russia have been key players that have really led this charge. Clearly this has been a long-term strategic decision on behalf of these countries and the reasons for this are obvious and really come back to the monetary policy of the ECB and the Federal Reserve and their willingness to actually debase the value of their currencies. Central banks would normally purchase sovereign bonds to uh, hold on their balance sheets as the key reserve but with yields so incredibly low the desire to hold uh, the same level of treasuries is much diminished. Meanwhile it can be argued that holding gold increases the longer term credibility of both the central bank and the country's uh, currency. What's more is that this gold can then be lent out uh, to willing borrowers in exchange for uh, dollar income. As such it has become increasingly popular for many middle income countries uh, to hold more gold. For instance the period between 2011 and 2016 saw a significant bear market for gold during which time central banks continued to add to their reserves. More recently a period of trade tensions, geopolitical issues and threats of sanctions have encouraged central banks to move more of their reserves away from US dollars. And while central banks remain net buyers of gold, many have chosen to stop purchasing more gold right now. Just consider central banks were net buyers of gold totaling 8.4 million ounces during the first seven months of this year and total demand for the year as uh, a whole is forecast at around 10.5 million ounces on a net basis. In comparison 2018 and 2019 saw net purchases by central banks of 16.2 and 17.3 million ounces respectively, far higher than the rates we're currently seeing. The clear reason for this comes down to central banks price sensitivity. Just think about it, you would want a responsible central bank preparing for the next crisis while the sun is shining. This will help to enhance your country's international status and ensure a degree of respect for your country's monetary discipline. Such strategic purchasing is simply a matter of taking out insurance. Yet when the price goes up and a domestic situation unfolds you want the uh, central bank acting to support the economy in full knowledge of the sound money reserves possessed at your central bank. According to the CPM group between 2008 and 2019 the correlation between net purchases of gold by central banks and the gold price stood at minus 0.56. That is a 1% rise in the price of gold will see a minus 0.56 reduction in demand from central banks. With gold up around 24% this year demand has subsequently fallen back noticeably. For instance, the People's Bank of China has not reported any purchases so far this year. And there are even those banks who have uh, turned to becoming net sellers such as uh, the Kyrgyz Republic or Kazakhstan who have uh, recently chosen to further diversify their balance sheet through mining Bitcoin. And so it is with the likes of Russia who have seen their oil export reserves plummet. This has led to much diminished foreign exchange earnings and led to Russia suspending its gold purchases in April this year. Russia's accumulation of gold reserves has been uh, significant over recent times as we can see here. In fact Russia's gold holdings as a percentage of monetary reserves are larger than other major emerging economies where gold has accounted for 20.4% of Russian central bank monetary reserves. But the Russian central bank did buy 900,000 ounces of gold in the first quarter of 2020. 
Some banks are still buying, such as the Central Bank of Turkey, which has actually been the biggest buyer of gold over the course of the last year. It doubled its holdings in just a year from 268.9 tonnes to 583 tonnes. Putting this into perspective emphasises that Turkey bought more gold than every other central bank combined. Russia purchased just 93 tonnes in this same time period. Meanwhile, the Reserve Bank of India has added 850,000 ounces over the same period. While I expect these uh, two countries to continue to add gold due to the weakness in their domestic currencies, we are likely to see a general cooling in demand unless there is a significant price discount. And so what does this trend therefore mean for gold demand overall? Well, if we consider that around half the demand for gold is through jewellery demand and the rest is largely made up of investment demand, central bank demand and a small proportion of industrial demand, clearly we are going to see investment demand grow uh, considerably, particularly from uh, more advanced Western economies. The price dynamics here are entirely different where conventional investors buy more as the uh, price rises in what later then becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy as a market supply tightens. Ultimately investment demand will compensate for central bank demand. After all central banks remain net sellers of gold right up until 2010. When they re-entered the gold markets, the price escalated and that's when we saw gold hit its 2011 top. As we near the pinnacle of economic darkness, we may see such a dynamic play out once again. Certainly, if this report is accurate, uh, China is set to continue to add to its vast and largely unreported gold hoard. Globally, all central banks will continue to hoard and this will be price supportive. Yes, some emerging markets could become forced uh, into distress selling uh, to access US dollars, but this is likely to uh, be kept to a real minimum. Ultimately, it would seem, therefore, that the cooling in demand from central banks in buying gold is not likely to have a profound impact upon price. It is that behaviour that the central bank's revealed preference for real sound money highlights to us more than anything else how precarious the current situation actually is. Thanks so much for watching. Do consider subscribing and make sure you check out these videos and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.